forward. Welcome to Exposition. Stay tuned. We're going to talk to a uh, very talented artist, Pam Connolly. Thanks for staying with us and welcome to Exposition. Are we all right? Okay. So we're talking to a, uh, a painter who wasn't always a painter, but uh, got there and I don't know if it's a case of need or what, but we'll get her story. Yes. And other things, she's very creative. Mm -hmm. Okay. So welcome Pam Connolly. Yeah. Hi. Glad to be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up being an artist. The evolution. Yeah, it, it is strange actually because most of my life I was the opposite of creative. I did um, a biology major and did 20 years of medical research. And then um, in 2003 I got Lyme disease, which totally debilitated my brain and my body for oh. several years oh. and uh, after a couple years of having Lyme disease my husband bought me a set of charcoal pencils and some oil paints because he was trying to help me um, come out of the brain fog and come out of the uh, depression that went along with chronic pain and uh, first few attempts were disasters because I had no energy and no um, ability to focus but that it sparked something and a few years later I actually tried again and took a couple classes at Shawnee and uh, that kind of like sparked things and it's just been an evolution since then starting with oil paint and then well, actually, a couple of acrylics and then oil paint, and then just in the last year, I made the transition to watercolor. So was the Lyme disease untreated? Uh, I wasn't diagnosed for eight months. Oh, wow, that is. And um, there was a lot of things going on, and they tried a bunch of, you know, they had no clue what was happening. So by the time that it was diagnosed, I'd already had central nervous system infection, and that's why. And at that point in time, it's probably hard to treat? Very, very. I was on antibiotics for three or four years. Wow. You wow. know, so, and plus some other things, because I know Lyme disease isn't the only thing ticks carry, and I had two other co-infections. Hmm. Oh, my goodness. So, so were you working at the time? Um, I was the first, like, month or so, and then it got to the point where I just was totally non-functioning. <laughs> What, were, what was your job? Um, at that time, I was teaching high school gifted students oh, in okay. science because huh. we'd moved to Louisiana, and that's where I picked up the Lyme disease. And um, there weren't any lab jobs in the town we were living in. I mean, research facilities. So I ended up, you know, trying something different. Hmm. So. Uh, so do you? Are you working now? Or are you? No, I have not been able to work. I still have. A lot of problems with uh, chronic pain and though my brain is functioning a lot better I still have a lot of days where I'm just in a, a fog and can't do real well just can't put things together yeah and move forward um, so that's why the painting has really been good because I can do that for a couple hours at a time you know when I can focus and then go back to it right yeah so it has actually been a psychological and spiritual lifesaver art has mm -hmm. and I think good therapy yeah without that I doubt if you know I would have pulled myself out of that extreme depression that came with the whole situation because with with art I think it takes you 
to a place where you have to focus. Right. You have to be like what they call in flow in, in focusing all your, your concentration on something else other than yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very it's very relaxing. It's like the closest thing to um, non like meditation, like a non meditating meditation. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so that, it's really it's been a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. We're so glad. Now, I think you uncovered some some good hidden talents that you didn't even know you had. That's wonderful. Uh, well, it definitely Amazing. came as a surprise. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Especially after the so first So do you think you had attempts. talent or do you think you're learned? Well, I think it's probably, with all this stuff, it's a combination. Um, you might have some talent, but if you don't put in the hard work. Right, right. You know, and, and learn techniques and um, that's the thing is like, I've always been afraid of, I don't know if it's in my personality that if I don't think I'm going to do something well, I don't even try it. Right. Yeah. But Valerie and my other best friend, Courtney Ritchie, mm -hmm. have both been very important to pushing me out of my comfort zone and That's try good. trying things that I had never thought that I would be able to do because I'd sit down and try, and of course that didn't work, so give up. Right. You mm -hmm. know, but they won't let me do that. <laughs> no, no way. You are definitely in the flow of things and doing extremely well and going above and beyond, I think, uh, expectations that you probably have. Yeah. And, you're just... And there's such a good art community right here in this small town, which was a big surprise. In fact, uh, a couple years ago when we were thinking of, my husband was talking about retiring and we wanted to find a different place to live and I told him specifically I wanted to move to Galapagos so I could be closer to the art people down here. Hmm. We're so glad you did. <laughs> We're so glad. You're amazing in the, what you've accomplished in such a short period of hmm. time. And so how long have you been, been at this? Uh, I probably started my first attempts with acrylic about four or five years ago, okay. but I didn't really do much. I didn't push myself. I worked maybe a couple hours, maybe once or twice a week, but it's been in the last year to two years that I've actually, now if I go a day without painting, I, I feel withdrawal symptoms. You know, hmm. I've, just, <laughs> I've just, I have to get down every day and paint. Hmm. And you have an area set up just for that, for your creativity and your studio space. Right, we set up a studio in the basement and it's got windows that, we have a beautiful view of Galpolis and the Ohio River and um, West Virginia. So it's a very good place to work. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and painting isn't all you do. In fact, you have been teaching some classes at our place, the uh, Artisan Shop and Studio. And what else do you do besides paint? Um, oh, I've, I've dabbled some in, um, so, I mean, taking some like old things like jeans and old material and stuff I find and fashioning them into purses for upcycling and I crochet. Yes. So that's my other uh, thing that I do just about every day but uh, I don't do any design work with the crochet so I don't actually consider it as creative so much as just something that's relaxing. Well picking the colors and putting together the patterns and things like that that's that's designing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And when you're painting, picking the subject matter and things like that, that's designing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, with the crocheting, I don't do design work. But yeah. with the painting, yeah. I think, I think that's a big part of it is um, finding something that's a passion. Like the most recent one, well, we can talk about later is, if you want, is like the um, doing a whole series on endangered species. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, let's look at some pictures and see. Yeah. Okay. Is this acrylic? 
Yeah, that is acrylic, and that's one of my very first attempts at trying to paint after I started getting my brain back together. I did a, small, a short series of um, things of, of toys that I had found in antique stores and stuff like that, that I just, uh, that's one of my first ones. That one, um, that one was done about the same time as I did the rusty toy car that'll show up in a bit, but I had, that's all part of my toy series. Yeah, that one. That's um Oh gosh, that is neat. Yeah, the perspective is is good on these things. And I love the color choices, mm -hmm. background and subject matter. Right. Well, a lot a lot of people have problems with perspective. Mhm. Mm but yeah. that that right. was uh yeah, some toys that I've those all of these came from antique stores or flea markets or something cuz I've got this thing about upcycling or reusing things yes. and um I, and things disappearing, you know, you, that that's part of the toy thing is like these go back to old days yes. when people had these kind of toys and then... Is that like a rubber duck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think there was a, a song about that. But uh, that, yeah. was another, that was another, that was another rubber... That was Ernie. Um, rubber squeak toy that was like the rubber duck. Did you want that for Christmas? Um, maybe. <laughs> I have a rubber duck sitting in no, my shower. Oh. Referencing the, the oh. I, all I want for Christmas is a hippopotamus or something like oh. that. Oh. <laughs> what? I thought it was There's two front teeth. Did I just spit well, on you? I'm sorry. There, there is a hippopotamus Christmas song. That's why I said There that. is? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Have I ever heard it? I don't know. <laughs> I'll show it to you later. So, okay. what do we have next? Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, man. This is something that I've started recently is um, I wanted to learn more about how shading and shadows and all that stuff work. So I started playing around with um, doing digital art. This so is so cool. This you, you start out with like a blank canvas on, on uh, Photoshop? Yeah, either Photoshop or if I'm using my iPad, there's another a uh, program called Procreate that mm -hmm. I use a lot. You work with layers by doing, uh, oh, oh that was gosh. done with Photoshop. Look at that, I it's like, like that. a chameleon dragon. Mm -hmm. With, uh, yeah, you start with doing a rough draft and then you add another layer and then refine the drawing and then add another layer and then get your final line drawing and then each layer you add color and highlights like and shadows. And yeah, I thought it was it looks like a photograph plan. and all that stuff. So I'm pretty good at photography in Photoshop, but I have not tried just making something, you know, out of nothing. This is what used so, to be in the Is this shop. acrylic? Uh, that's acrylic. That's okay. actually the very first painting I ever did. It's beautiful. I, I started out colors. drawing with pencil and stuff, and I went to oil because oil doesn't dry, and I figure I could right, fix right. my mess that's ups. Why that's why I did this in acrylic and I didn't like the way that I couldn't work with it longer right. and mm -hmm. so that's why it was not too long after this and the toys that I did that I switched the oils. And that's why uh, acrylic now, and then watercolor kind of scares me a little bit. Yeah, I was terrified of watercolor. Yeah. That's, I still am. That's oil mm -hmm. and that was uh, grand nephews and the two older boys were helping the youngest get a drink of water. So, so that was at a wedding reception. Hmm. Um, and now that, I, I did that in, let's see, last year because they were having a contest for the Jackson Apple Festival and they, wanted, they wanted a painting that was centered Apple. around apples. Mm -hmm. So I got some stuff together and set it up on my stove and did Look this, this uh, I guess you call it a still life. Apple mm -hmm. is king. And yeah. it is sold and award winning. Uh, yeah, it's won, it won awards in a couple different places and uh, Ohio Valley Bank owns it right hmm. now. Yay! I need to sh start showing some of my stuff because I, I don't enter into contests or anything. So aren't you showing your stuff right yeah, now? We'll right talk now. about that later, okay? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just, okay. I should try doing some of that. And this is... Uh, is that I, like a pencil drawing? Or? Yeah, that's graphite, and that was one of my early graphite uh, um, drawings that is a nephew that was 
his parents put, took a picture of him on the beach, and I just did that He's from so the excited. photograph, and I called it, who, me? Yeah, <laughs> I didn't do that. And uh, that's just from a reference photo. I don't know those kids, but it was a good, I thought it was cute, and... So do you just look at the photo and then draw from that? Yeah, um, sometimes I'll use, you know, a little bit of, like, just the outline to get the... You know, tracing uh, or...? Yeah, I'll trace just the okay. outline so that I have the where things are located. Okay, and then I, I was fill better in. at just drawing somebody than, you know, an art teacher taught me how to, like, you know, measure from here to here, and, you know, there's different measurements you got to take, and it's like, well, people don't fit that all the time. No, well... And I had drawn one of my best friends, and it's like, well, that looks like him. And then when we redid it with the rules, it didn't look like him anymore. Ah, well, uh, when I found out that Leonardo da Vinci and a bunch of other people all used what they called the camera obscura, mm -hmm. and traced what they were doing to All start right. with, then like, I thought, okay. well, okay, it's okay to use a tool to get me started. Right. It's and not dishonest art then. No. No. <laughs> At least it better not be here. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's your interpretation with measurements or not, you know. Okay, this is an oil on a wood panel of that same, the same little boy that was getting a drink of water. Mm -hmm. His parents had taken him to um, place where they sold blue jeans and stuff and he popped this hat on himself and his dad took a picture and I so painted cute. that. That's uh... Oh, this, now this is a I whole different this. thing, right? Right. This is watercolor but this is done in a technique where, that, where you press the... Um, I took the leaves and the vines and stuff and laid them out on a piece of uh, watercolor paper mm -hmm. and then poured watercolor paint on it and then put another uh, plastic sheeting on top and then clamped it and waited for it to dry and then three days later this is what you know okay what That's came out so, so you're not really painting this it's just a it's um, a technique I guess. right it's a technique that one and the next one that was the purple hyacinth vine and now this one is one I call spring fire Hmm. That's so And it was cool. done with, with pressing. I, I put some different uh, leaf pieces and stuff like that on there. That, that was the one thing I had, you know, when I took my photographs down to the shop. I'm saying, what's the name of it? It's like, I don't oh. know. <laughs> how, how do you name things, you know? Well, some things I just have names. Mm -hmm. And some things, you know, you're like this you know, next so it's one. It's just a boy or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like the one that he had, that one, that's just, that was a daffodil that was in my garden. And uh, that's oil. Oh, okay. I thought maybe that was watercolor. No, that's what, now the lilies are also from my garden and that was, uh, no, you're right. The daffodil was watercolor and the lilies is watercolor. That's one of my more recent ones. Okay. And that's watercolor? That's watercolor. Yeah. Your composition. It seemed are like perfect. it was always hard for me to get depth and color. And you just got to go over and over and over uh, again. Well, or? it's a bunch of layers, and I partially wet the paper and then put the color on and then slowly kind of let it drag out. And then mm. each time a little bit less distance so you get that gradient. Okay. But um, now that's, that's watercolor. And those are puffins, and that's actually going to be the first that I'm doing with that endangered species. What new got you new with body that? of work. Well, I guess it's a combination of my science background, being a biology major, okay. and loving animals. And it's also it's bothering me that so many animals are just disappearing while we watch. Right. Mm -hmm. um, like the puffins nothing. aren't critically endangered, but their population has gone from like millions down to maybe 20% of what they were a decade ago because mm. their food source is disappearing. Oh, yeah. And um, that's a helmeted hornbill and they are, they are critically endangered and it's because uh, poaching 
for those crests. That's a solid ivory, it's called red ivory, but they're, they are definitely um, critically endangered. That's one thing I wish would stop is just killing animals for whatever little thing. Yeah. You know, just like the, the horn off of a rhinoceros. and. Right, and the sad thing about the hornbills, and I've got another picture of one flying, um, the, oh, that's. It should be the last one. Yeah, but this, this is like, there, there is. that one. That's the flying uh, helmeted hornbill. But the sad thing is that for their uh, nesting, the female gets sealed up in a tree except with a space for the male to come and feed her and hmm. she hatches the eggs and he digs her out when the chicks are ready to fledge. Does she build the wall or does he build the wall? I think they build it together hmm. okay. and then when but the problem with the poaching that really uh, upsets me is that the male gets killed for the helmet Oh, and the then red the female ivory, starves. and then the female starves, and the the mother and the chicks die. Oh, and so that's what. What horrible. area do they live in? Is it like uh, the jungle or something? Yeah, this is in Indonesia. Oh, okay, in the east. Yeah, well, it's a sad story. But I want I want to do a whole series. Maybe that's I was had been talking with Valerie. That may become what I do with the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Is to There's just explore. <laughs> all the different endangered species of plants animals plants animals i mean i've done birds but there's plenty of mammals and amphibians and insects and everything that are just disappearing and i'd like to do a whole series before they're gone mm -hmm. that's wonderful so you you have several in a series of uh hummingbirds and this is one of them uh, yes, that's um, and bees. Right, <laughs> I have so cute. I like them together. <laughs> this is like honeybees and a hummingbird sharing peacefully, um, and then that was the one where the wasp is chasing the hummingbird away from the flowers, and then there was another one where there's there's my the this. little sneaky hornet trying to get a drink. Um, while the hummingbirds at the feeder, mm -hmm. and these are all watercolor. Yeah, these are all watercolor. Hmm. That's detail of the the hornet, she and that's started. the hummingbird detail. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. I can't wait. Now, did you just come show. up with that, or did you take a picture of this and then go from there? Um, I do both. Okay. I mean, I like the the one of the wasp chasing the hummingbird was inspired by a photo that I'd actually taken, but I didn't have the depth of field right and it was all blurry and everything, but just the idea right. of the the fight that was going on that... Uh, That's my sugar water. <laughs> I, I used a composite of maybe three or four different reference photos of mm -hmm. hummingbirds and put it together in the posture I wanted and everything. and. Then same thing with, I, I think I used two different um, wasp pictures mm -hmm. and then put those together to kind of get the detail I wanted. But uh, they're amazing. You have just progressed so quickly with, with your art and especially watercolor. And now in your computer art, it's amazing. You just, it's. Well, I, I feel like I'm in the middle of the journey mm -hmm. and I want to, continue to learn and hopefully get even better. And that's one thing about art, you never stop learning. You never stop because there's so much more to learn. Um, we need it. So I think if there's some takeaways from this show, if you have Lyme disease, treat it. Yeah, <laughs> get diagnosed First. even if you have to go to multiple doctors. All right. Immediately. Get, get Lyme disease treated. Please. Uh, second, there's probably some talents you didn't know you just need to explore and learn something and learning okay so you've got talent you still need to you know it's like wow you can do that well you still need to learn some more about how to do and express that talent that's right it opens doors to yeah. so many possibilities and, yeah and don't be like me that if you don't think you're going to do it perfectly at first quit 
Yep, right. You know? yeah, there's a series of mistakes you have to make. Right. And it takes, it's a long, hard process to learn the techniques. Right? I don't think it's hard. I mean. Well. Some of them, I guess. Some of it is. It depends, I guess, on, on the le level of challenges that you want to. Yeah. To me, it's like exploration. Yeah, it's yeah. It's not failures, it's ex exploration. Okay, if I did. Well, and that goes back to my, the whole science background is mm -hmm. we never considered any experiment a failure. It just didn't turn out the way you thought it was going to. Right. You probably learned something. And, we, and you learned something from it. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's the same with every painting that I do. I see something that I would have done differently and then I'll put that in with the next stuff. Always learning from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, what and we would call a mistake. If I, there was another takeaway. Sorry. Uh, for me, is find like-minded people that will encourage you. Yes, yeah, ma'am. That helps. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I don't know who they would be. I, I don't, don't know, know who that would be <laughs> either. I don't know who that would be. Hurry! <laughs> Wee! <laughs> These are good people. They're all good people. Well. Okay, is there any other words of wisdom you want to leave people with? Yes. Uh... I guess just because you're old, don't get, uh, uh, don't stop learning. Don't mm -hmm. get stuck. Don't get stuck. Get and this probably helps with Alzheimer's or other things about keeping your mind uh, moving and exploring. Because one of my things is use it or lose it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That goes with your body and mind and everything else. Yes, it does. It sure does. And it, it is something that is calming in life. Just to keep learning. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, can I mention real quickly that Mike, you wanted to explore getting your work out there besides, you know, m maybe the wedding pictures and things like that, but yeah, you have less of commercial type photography or things that people just hire me to do. Right. Is things that I just do for the fun of it and for creativity's sake or learning, you know, it's like, well, I wonder how I can do with a portraiture type of deal or. Yes. You know. Well, you've got a show right now going mm -hmm. on. And <laughs> so That's I could say I was, it. I was trying. Yeah, I know. Well, I thought I'd get it in here before you ran out of time. <laughs> so until yes. January sometime, yeah, you can see I... some of my photographs at the Artisan Shop, which is at. Yes. Very close to Pine Street and 3rd Avenue. Mm -hmm. 749 3rd. And um, you're going to be bringing in some more mm -hmm. photographs. There's some I was like, well, man, I should have brought that in. So I went ahead and printed them and yes. got some frames. And that's what Pam eventually, with some of her uh, building collection of the endangered species, that um, you will have a show at the artisan studio and shop um, well, gallery. Well, that, that's the goal in a few months. Yes. Yes, we're looking forward to both. And okay. thank you so much. As long as you don't get me sidetracked with Mothman or something. Well, sometimes <laughs> we do that. Okay. I'm glad you all stayed with us and watched, and I hope you all gained something, some inspiration or whatever, and uh, explore your talents, and thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you for having me.